Before we dive into the gameplay, check out QuestGames.app, my catalog of Quest games with a 10% discount on all titles through my affiliate links. Grab your VR games at a reduced price. Yes, yes, I'm on my way. Come, Sergei is waiting for us. Seriously, Serdar, who sleeps during the day? And yes, I know, there is no difference between day and night down here. Good day. Doctor. Hello. heard the rumors, but there was a mutant attack on one of our guard posts. We are preparing a team to take them down. So everyone's a bit tense, as you might imagine. Oh, great God. Go and grab a bottle. I will. Thank you. Well, guys, let's have a drink. To living. To life. To life. Ah, great stuff. Yes. Listen to me, Han. You're not a bad guy, but you keep to yourself too much. Always sitting with your books, even talking you into getting a drink is tough. Lighten up a bit, man. Yeah, or you'll just end up all alone. I appreciate the advice.
Saltar. Grab the explosive. convinced that the things we can see are real and those we can't see are not. What's true darkness and what's true blindness? Open your eyes and you shall see. Or you shall not. Sometimes one must get into an utter darkness in order to begin to see. We avoid the darkness because it hides things that may be too horrible for us even to imagine. It's the unspeakable that scares us. The unspeakable that the darkness holds within. It's the asset that corrodes the limits of the world we think we know. Dark. You can't avoid it any longer. You can only embrace it. into space. Flap thought you were one of those boogeymen the exhibition guys were babbling about. He almost shot you. I'm fine. I just had the strangest feeling of deja vu for a moment. Deja vu, eh? Isn't that what they call it when you experience a memory from a past life? Past life? Pfft. It's a misfiring of electrical discharges in your brain, causing an illusion, nothing more. <laughs> if you say so. Now, if you don't mind. I'd like to get back home. Oh, I'm sorry, o of course. Turn the key to start the trolley. Be safe, Sardar. I'll be all right.
Thank God you are back. Max has been up my butt asking where you are literally every five minutes. Tasha, <laughs> treating drunken merchants for radiation sickness really goes as planned. He said to send you down to the mushroom farm as soon as you turned up. And word of warning, our station chief is not in one of his better moods. <laughs> I look forward to seeing one of those firsthand someday. Through the living quarters, you might still catch it. Wow! They've got so many different types of mushrooms here! Huh? I told you, you would like Academicheskaya. Everything's so nice! stripes on the back. Since people keep walking into them at night. Are you kidding? Oh, hey, hey, sir. Have you talked to Max yet? I heard there's some Max. No, I'm on my way hey. to see him now. Oh, good. Max, servers. One sec. Yeah, yeah, send him in. Check them again. The girl had to go somewhere. I gotta go. Max out. Want to switch jobs? Maybe you should chase runaways and assholes all day and let me run around playing doctor for a while. I've got a very healthy list of people I'd like to stab with a needle, let me tell you. I think you may want to work on your bedside manner. Don't even start. You and your wife are not my favorite people right about now. Yana, has something happened? Has something happened? He asks. If by something, do you mean, did your wife destroy our mushroom farm because she heard the voice of her dead son again? Because if so, then yes, something happened. Uh, is she all right? She's a lot better than her mushroom farm. to build this steam system. Hundreds of issues to consider. You know what scenario never came up? What if you can't hear the voices of the dead inside your pipes? I don't understand. Yana was doing so well. <sighs> I'll take care of it, I promise. Yeah, well, I promised 500 times. I'm up to my eyeballs in bullshit today, so I don't need any more, okay? Sorry. Go. Go check on your wife. But then, you come see me. Friend or not, this station is my wife. 
This has to be the end of it. My calling as an interior decorator. Perhaps. Okay, go on then. I know you're dying to start doctoring me. Max said you were fetching. You feel up to tell Do you is the question. Stop taking my hello pen You Keep in mind I was still taking them when I decided to stop. We've been through Please, this. Please, Serdar, it hurt me. Your meds didn't make me lose it. On the contrary, they kept obscuring my ability to hear, but I was so desperate to hear. Huh? Hallucinations are not trivial. You are to assume are hallucinations. You hear voices. No one else. The fact that you won't even consider any alternative is the reason I threw the Heloperidol out in the first place. You threw them away? None of you have ever heard that your voice, so how can you know what I'm hearing? Because he died, Yana. He died, Yana, 15 years ago. And you can't hear the nature of a boy for 15 years. Where's the shuttle? Back there, through the vent. Make 
mentioned the young girl who disappeared in the station. Could you allow her to discuss it? No, mister. There has to be a reason for everything. I didn't hallucinate my son's voice because of a bunch of gossiping busy bodies. For all things, there is an explanation. Even though one is too terrible to accept. I can't exactly tell that to Petya, can I? I'm sorry. It wasn't fair. When you're only kidding for me. My love is not something you ever have to apologize for. It is free. Hold your happy. Go on. Come back to your boyfriend, Max. I had him wine for you to go see him once you made sure I wouldn't burn anything else down. I think I've earned a little hard labor. Just give me some time, okay? Like I can reduce some of the pressure from here. Max passed through a while ago. I guess you saw what happened at the farm then. It's being taken care of. Thanks. Max is back. He's up in the office. Hello. You're a child. I'm the boss. The way this jungle is growing, we may never have to repopulate the surface. <laughs> I doubt God invented plastic with nuclear winter in mind. But hey, a fake garden? It's better than no garden at all, eh? How is Yana? Pretending her husband isn't a hot-headed, insensitive ass. You know what? Good. Say stupid shit more often. Your two are so lovey-dovey as it is. I, I, I literally throw up in my desk at least once a day. She was trying so hard to be reasonable. My friend. I've watched you both in your several lifetimes worth of bullshit just to try and make her feel halfway human again. Trust me, your wife knows that. Let us hope so. In any event, the more pressing concern is that it appears Yana has uh, run out of her hollow peridol. That's why she lost her edge. <sighs> you and bad timing, pal. The stalker who tracks down your fancy medical stuff very talented lady I used to run with, named Nata. She was supposed to make a delivery over a week ago, which is long enough that I think I may have to strike Nata out of my little romantic birthdays calendar, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Though, I do know the route she usually takes. Could the medication still be there somewhere? The goddamn holy grail could be there. Max, why don't you just tell me where the route is? Because you go. And from here, the first thing you'll hit is a Nosalis den. That's probably the most relaxing part of the trip. You forget, I am not, shall we say, inexperienced when it comes to Nosalis. Oh, right. You're all stationed. Sorry. Um, anyway, normally I'd uh, hire some poor suckers 
to go. But since we're running low on poor suckers right now, my lovely voice in your ear will have to do. Stick it to your shoulder like this. Voice activated. State of the art. When there was a state of the art. It's almost like living in the future. And for times when my wisdom alone does not suffice. I've heard they don't do much without those bullets. <laughs> you want an empty clip just to look cool? Be my guest. Go on, smart guy. Take it. Yes, I know. Very pretty. Now do me a favor and holster it while you're in the station. Okay, cowboy? We have to at least pretend we are civilized down here. Lucky for you, the same supply cart that dropped Gorky Park off here is still uh, out on the station. And since nobody killed Akim on his way back here, his spare ammo should still be in the trolley as well. Max, you there? One sec. Truck 2, call me when you find the ammo. Okay, I'm here. Let me find the ledger. Hey, Serda! the trouble of draining a few bottles, you know, give you something to shoot at. Show me that Tokarev Max gave you. Next, grab this magazine and insert it into your Tokarev. Go on, get a feel for the trigger. you want is to run into some lurkers with an empty gun. You're empty. Here is a new magazine. I don't know if you handled that kind of trolley before, but Akim was complaining it's hard to start. <clears throat> Admittedly, Akim is an idiot. my wife enough. Hey, give yourself some credit. The day is still young. Let's just focus on getting your wife's meds. Right. Where do I find her? Not on her caravan avoided a lot of metros less desirable elements by taking a route that's a bit, shall we say, off the beaten path. Hope you're in the mood for a little sightseeing. For a pillar of the community, you certainly do have some colorful associates. And to think, you gave up the romantic life of a stalk. To get off the surface? You're damn right! Imagine the worst hell hole of a station you've ever lived in. That's still a day spa compared to the kind of shit I went through out there. Quite like you said, the surface is hell nowadays. You guys do live in paradise. The end of the line is fast approaching, my friend. About time. Okay, hop off and head over across the other set of tracks. You should find a reinforced door off to your left.
Some impressive equipment here. The museum kept a backup generator for security and stuff like that. Which museum? The Tretyakov? Yana and I went on our first date here. Well, before you get too misty-eyed, Nata's route doesn't go through the museum itself. Still, I haven't been here since, well, since before Yana and I split back then. We met when we were in university. I picked the museum for our date because I felt I needed to come across as uh, more refined. Right, because everyone thinks you're such a savage. The entrance to the archives is a couple levels above you, on the opposite side of the escalators. I remember waiting for Yana at the top of those escalators. We agreed to meet here at noon. I'm there waiting, watching face after face rise in front of me over the top of the escalator. I waited three hours, and at 3.06, I get a tap on my shoulder. And there's Yana, behind me with her arm in a sling. So in other words, neither of you knew how to take a hit. She called us Stamar.
about to confirm those mutant den rumors of yours. Signs for the museum, but the radiation levels are spiking something fierce. I didn't expect you'd be anywhere quite that toasty. Knowing Nata, she will have stored the gas mask on her route where it's needed. Look for it. face of yours and make your way across. And please, do me a favor. Be sure you check your watch now and again. It will let you know when your filter is going to run out. some things that go beyond the possible. You know, monsters whose existence you can't explain. Oh, come on. Monsters are just those animals we humans haven't studied properly yet. One can see a rookie who's venturing into hell for the first time. It's hell, stupid. It just exists. And its rules change before you can understand them. So that it can kill you and eat your soul. Now, your soul. You, for a chance, you stole the spirit. Okay, so, Sherlock. All right. Nato's route runs down the staircase on the opposite side of that room. The results had something painted across its chest. At a museum. You don't say. It, it looked like a snake or something of that sort. Have you heard of anything like that? Could be just us, good old humans. 
metros full of all sorts weirdos doing creepy shit. I quite like the human explanation. Funny may not be the right word, but it just occurred to me that our last trip here also involved Yana becoming obsessed with a ghost. Now you're just making stuff up. The way Yana's mind worked, it was intoxicating. I never could keep up with that woman, and that's what made her thoroughly irresistible. We'd been to an exhibit of local Buryat artists, celebrating their Mongolian heritage where Yana became convinced I was the living reincarnation of Genghis Khan. What? Was Peter the Great taken? She became so enamored of the idea, she convinced me to undergo hypnotic regression, as if I'd suddenly remember this entire past life she'd invented for me. You actually did it? You've met my wife. Point taken. So what did you see when you were hypnotized? I couldn't remember anything, really. But Yana and the doctor assured me I was quite the convincing woman. Are you never told me this one? Sarver Khan, oh, that's hilarious. Don't laugh. I told that story one too many times in my old station. How would you like to be forever associated with a man who murdered millions of people? I'd be fine with that, actually. But hey, I guess there's hardly anyone as different from Genghis Khan as you in the universe. This is all such cheap nonsense, past lives, after lives, all alike. That's psychotherapy before psychotherapy. Allowing cavemen to cope with the fear of death, promising them a continuation. The floor in the archives is collapsed. I can't reach the stairwell. Everything is scant with you. I don't know what to tell you. That's where Nato's route runs. 